I have an interesting topic for you today, which every criminal defense lawyer has to consider and deal with at trial, and that's the rule of Brown against Dunn, which is a famous case which sets an evidentiary rule. And let me talk about it, and I'm gonna use the case, let, let me use a sexual assault example, okay. So, the alleged victims testified and she's given her version of events, and her testimony took three hours, examination in chief, for example, with the Crown. Now it's your turn as a defense counsel to challenge her veracity, her credibility, her reliability. And the rule of Brown v. Dunn says, ultimately, defense counsel, if you want to advance a different version of events that the sexual assault did not occur and have your client testify about his or her version of events which are different than the victims, you need to put enough of your client's version of events to that witness and cross so that they can respond. That's ultimately it. In other words, you have to put at least the gist or enough of your client's version of events, I'm repeating myself here, so that they can properly respond. And that's only fair, right? So it becomes tricky though, because you have to do it in a certain way and you don't want to overdo it. Let me put it that way. And I'll, and I'll explain it this way. What I do when I'm cross-examining a, a sexual assault victim, first of all, I'm trying to challenge her, him or her, because victims are both persuasions, I'm trying to challenge her, I'm trying to affect their credibility, their reliability, create inconsistencies, create improbabilities. And in doing that, I'm not necessarily putting my client's version of events through those many, many hours of, tes of testimony because they're not gonna admit it. Hey, if they admit some point along the way, that's great, I'm gonna highlight it. But the best technique to advance Brown be done is to challenge that witness, try and weaken their credibility and reliability and then at the end of your case, because you don't want them repeating their whole story again, you have to do this in a clever way. And here's the technique that I use and many lawyers say, look, we've been through this, I have an obligation now, and we can do it in a summary way, I know you're gonna disagree, to put my client's version of events. I'm gonna put some bullet points to you. You're free to expand if you want, but we can get through this now quickly. And I go boom, 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 and she says, no, that's not true, no, that's not true, that, no, that's not true. That's an, so that's the obligation. It's a clever way of doing it. You're, you're, you're attacking and challenging the witness all the way through, and then at the end, you are complying with Brown v. Dunn. Because if you start doing this during the course of the cross, it usually winds up in her just repeating her version of events or his or her version of events. And, and inexperienced defense counsel, I see that their cross-examination go flat all the time because they're, they're so worried about getting their client's version out. And that's not the way to attack. Hey, if they admit your client's version of events as you go along and you don't even have to do Brown v. Dunn at the end, that's wonderful, but the real world doesn't quite happen that way. And so that's, that's the technique to get through. And, and with this in mind, if you don't do that, what can happen then? Well, this is a real problem, especially for, I, I've seen some younger, more inexperienced counsel this happen to or, or forget. If you don't put your client's version of events at some point, and I'll do it at the end mostly, if you don't do that, the judge has to give, potentially you can give little or no weight to your client's evidence. So you've just effectively maybe lost the case by not complying. So it's such an important rule. It's something that I'm always thinking of as I'm doing the case. And hey, I love it if they admit things along the way, but obviously people just don't start admitting things and, and you, do, you tend to do it at the end of the case. And that's how to comply with Brown v. Dunn and then your client can testify and now you're, you're, the judge is allowed to properly weigh. Now, one other point, the judge doesn't have to. They, they, can, they can give little or no weight they don't have to give no weight, but they can decide it's discretionary. But it's so important. I, I've seen uh, some counsel really get burned if they don't comply with this rule properly in our Canadian criminal court system. Thank you for watching our video. We are absolutely committed to bringing you the best possible criminal and DUI educational videos. If you found this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you've been charged with a criminal offense in Ontario and require our services, please click on the link in the description below.